Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Contingency Plan Podcast. My name is Jedi Master David, and with me, as always, is um, Darth Austin. Hmm. Well, this is the uh, During Celebration Podcast, and uh, Darth Austin doesn't have tickets. Because he didn't get invited. <laughs> there he is. Yeah, so we're, we're pre-recording uh, an episode here that uh, will drop uh, while I'm away. At celebration, while I'm working, yeah. Unfortunately, I I don't know. In the in the hype of ticket ticketing or ticket buying, I I don't even know. I don't think we were starting the podcast. I think this was. I think I'm pretty sure it was maybe two weeks in, but I'd have to go back. Really? Yeah, I don't. I don't remember. I don't remember if we'd started the podcast or not. Uh, I feel like maybe it was around the same time, but I think I bought the tickets beforehand. I just I don't know. Didn't think about it. I'm not good at thinking about others. It's okay. You brought me pizza. That's, That's true. That's Jedi Council for you. Yeah, I brought pizza from one of my favorite pizza places from my hometown. That you will not name. Little place called Mr. Bleep. Pizza. <laughs> oh, man. This this pizza place, uh, I don't even remember when they came in, really, but they, uh, they're kind of like your quintessential 80s, 90s, small town pizzeria. Uh, how would you, how would you describe it? Cause it's not really thin, thin crust. It's got a thick, it's got a, like a crispy cracker bottom crust, but then sort of like a soft middle a ton know, of it, cheese. It would almost be like a really high end box pizza. You shut your mouth. <laughs> no, honestly, <laughs> when you think about it, the type of pizza we no, got, it. you only get from like, not DiGiorno, but the other brands, like there's a few brands that have that style. No other restaurant does. I think there's a drive through I know of. It's like a yeah. it's like a beer drive through but they also sell pizza. Yeah, it's it's kind of <laughs> weird. I I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to describe but it, it, it's uh yeah, I don't know. When it, we were kids, that was actually a pretty popular style was. of pizza. They, now they don't do that. Anymore. Well, they they no, they they don't. But uh the the place sponsored a lot of like baseball teams, softball mm-hmm. teams in the 80s and 90s and it was just a cool spot to go. They had uh, uh, Pac-Man and um, uh, Super Mario Brothers cabinet games <laughs> in the in the place. So whenever we'd get a pizza, I'd always be like, "Let's go pick it up, yeah. like inside, so yeah. that I can go play the game." And hopefully, it's not ready yet. Well, that was the point. It's like I just ordered it. Well, we gotta go. Yeah. <laughs> and you remember, you remember uh, when we used to hang out at Pizza Hut when that was a cool place to hang out too. Well, back when Pizza Hut was a restaurant, yeah, they, the, I think every Pizza Hut had that ball rolling Pac Man game, yeah, and then the centipede, yeah, uh, among other things, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like Pizza Hut was an amazing restaurant, then it was crap, yeah, and now it's Wing Street, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it, it, the it's it's funny. I mean, how pizza has because I actually managed a Pizza Hut at one point. Mm-hmm. And it's funny how they've changed because I remember going to Pizza Hut as a kid, uh, getting like a pedestal put on your table, Mm -hmm. the pan pizza served in the pan with a cork board bottom. And then, you know, dad get like a beer and he'd, he'd fork and knife his pizza sometimes. I remember that. Well, it was a sit down Uh, restaurant. You got to eat with fork and knife. I I never did that. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, get some breadsticks. Uh, You know, they, they, you know, the pastas were okay. Although their pizzas back then were really loaded compared to now. So you almost, you almost had to fork and knife it. Yeah. That, that's, that is one of the things about the pizza industry. Um, toppings man yeah i i actually i got a pizza from i think i got a papa john's pizza not too long ago i've never been a big fan and this just confirmed because it's been like literally probably my god i don't know 10 years since i've had a papa john's pizza i literally just haven't eaten it and i remember at the time when i the first time i got it i was like well this sucks and i never got and i literally never got it again and then i got it i was like you know what i should give it a second chance Mm -hmm. It and gave, it me, and you're never it gonna gave me the worst heartburn yeah. I have had from a pizza. And ironically, the only pizza from them that doesn't make me sick 
and I still don't get it often, but the Buffalo. I'm it's good. The only man. decent pizza. I'll, I'll never order from them again because yeah. I just don't I think they're no very interest. good. Oh, but, but honestly, they have the garlic sauce. It's like that is just straight. That's oil. nasty. It's gross. Um, pizza Hut is so expensive now that we, well, Pizza Hut's so damn greasy as well. well they, we ordered three like two weeks ago or a yeah. week ago or something. Three pizzas, a taco, which they accidentally did stuffed crust. I didn't even know they did stuffed crust taco pizza. You can, yeah, it's really good. Yeah, no, you, but you I can, never knew that was a thing. You, you can taco any any crust pizza you want yeah. as long as they do taco pizza. It was like taco, pepperoni, and a meat lovers. All three stuffed crust because they messed up the order. Yep. Guess how much you thought you think? Well, you think back when was? I managed it, they were uh, a stuffed crust. Like one topping was like twelve bucks. I think yeah, especially exactly. might have been fourteen. Lar- they're all large, but which just, is just stuffed guess. crust. They don't make right. they don't make medium, so but just guess. I don't know. Fifty six dollars for three pizzas. Yeah, I believe that. Especially pizzas will do that though. But like when Dad took us out, it was probably like what fifteen bucks for all of us. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it, it, yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, different times though, obviously. Oh, Different decades, yeah. really decades ago, but uh, you, God, you guys are old and not talking about Star Wars. Well, they there had were pizza. Star Wars pizza posters <laughs> at that Pizza Hut. I think. Pretty sure there was one Star Wars poster. Yeah, why not? But yeah, no, it, it's it's funny. It was it was kind of neat. I, I, when I come back to town, there are actually two pizza places I like. There's that, and then the place where we get Stromboli. Uh-huh. Yeah, you never go there for pizza. Their pizza is actually really good. I know though. it is, but, but I never go there but for yeah, that because I can't the, do anything for the but strong bully. Yeah. yeah, Mr. Pizza is... Or, or subs. They yeah, good Mr. Pizza subs. does good subs, too. I tried if you haven't tried it, you need to sometime. But, uh, but yeah, anyway, they, they still make, uh, they still make like, <laughs> they call it a jumbo pizza. Mm-hmm. That pizza we had, that was a 17-inch pizza. Oh, really? Because most larges yeah. are only 14 inches. Yeah, yeah. Just like my anyway, but yeah, that was a 17 inch pizza, if you can believe that. Just yeah. like my, but anyway, uh, that was terrible. <laughs> it was, they could have cooked it a little bit longer, though. I will say that, just like your, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but no, 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 it was, it was good. It was good to, uh, good to get back out there again. Eventually, they yeah. won't be there, you know. It's a mom and pop shop, yeah. and we have kids probably aren't taking it over. <laughs> I don't think they have kids. Well, they probably don't have time to. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. That used to, like I said, that used to be a hopping place. I'd get my just you know pepperoni pizza and a you know can of Barks root beer and a soda pop. Barks root beer, a soda pop. Yeah, that's true. But Barks root from beer. Ohio, soda pop. I don't really. Yeah, I guess it's. Inter- I know a lot of people get, for some reason get like really touchy about that. I know because I call it soda. Yeah, and sometimes I'll say a pop, yeah. but some people like to get. It's pop. Angry about it. Pop. No soda. Well, you know what? It could be either one. It's, it's actually soda pop. So, so I can't. Sody. Sody pop. Yeah. Are you still three? Or <laughs> you could you could just call everything Pepsi like Grandma did. You're a Pepsi. <laughs> this yeah, is what, a Sprite. Yeah. What do you got? Well, it's a Pepsi. <laughs> it's a Sprite. <laughs> it's it's root beer. <laughs> no, but just go in there and grab yourself a Pepsi. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This is Gatorade, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So anyway, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of what's been going on. But uh, yeah, we 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 already uh, recorded an episode, but you're still doing good, right? Yeah, food coma's kind of setting in a little bit, but I'm good. I'll tell you, I'll tell you honestly though, I kind of have a problem when I go there because I could literally just sit there and eat an entire pizza, and I can't normally do that. But for some reason, I just have such a good time. Oh, I could have. There is so much I cheese on that it. damn thing, and this yeah. I, I like the sauce. The so- there was a lot of sauce, and, and that's the thing. It's like sometimes, sometimes, and I think it's only for that type of pizza. Mm-hmm. I'm cool with having a little bit more sauce. Well, yeah, because I mean the the cheese kind of soaks it up, on us. Yeah, and the, that and that oh, crust geez. definitely holds up to it better. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. But I'm telling you, you when, once that place goes by the wayside, you'll never see that type of pizza again. They, yeah. they just don't do it. It's like a hybrid yeah. between a hand tossed and a in a thin crust. Yeah, I mean it's probably just a really old family recipe, probably like hundred years old or something. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'll miss it when it's gone, and I, I'd like to buy the recipes. <laughs> just, just, I don't want your business. Yeah. Sell the business. I just want to buy the recipes right. for my own personal use. Yeah. I don't want to open a pizzeria because that's like a death nail nowadays. Yeah. 
But I just want it so that like I can just do it. <laughs> for imagine myself. actually being able to make money owning a pizza shop. That'd be a nightmare. You know what? I, I always I always thought that'd be cool to have a restaurant, but I'll tell you, I just want to own a deli. Marry it. <laughs> I just want to own a deli. Like just one of those cool like little Italian delis with yeah. all the you know, you make with the meats, stuff all around. Little markety yeah. type thing inside. I would that you know, nice fresh bread. Yeah. That's all I'd want to do. Because you know why? Because delis are awesome. Like good delis. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's the one. How many are there around us when you think about it? Well, around here, there's only the one down in the little college town. I'm not going to give yeah. you geographical locations as much as I. <laughs> Even though we told you the name of the pizza place. <laughs> well, there's whatever. But anyway, yeah, I mean, there, there's there's the one over by the, the college down the road, mm-hmm. which is, uh, that's great. Yeah. Two, I avoid um, that place because I don't want to be broke. Well, it's, I understand <laughs> that too, but yeah, man. I mean, uh, that's Jedi Council. Want to head into some hollow net? Sure. What do you? Only news we got is about you know Star Wars. Old Ryan, old Ryan, old oh, Ryan Johnson. Yeah, yeah. What What did you look up for that? The only thing that came up, I tried to look up some news while he was getting the pizza. <laughs> and the only thing that came up that was worth point. The only thing with a headline because everything else was just. Google search, Star Wars news, Star Wars news. Yeah. And this actually had a headline. Uh, he'd be okay if they retconned episode eight. Eh, I don't care. Uh, what would you say? He'd be okay if they retcon. Oh, okay. I'm like sorry. all the crap that happened in episode yeah, yeah, yeah. eight and episode nine. Like, hey, that didn't happen. Snoke's still alive. It was a projection. <laughs> Ret- retconning. Is that a word? It is a, con- it is a word. That doesn't make any Google sense. Google it. I don't want to Google it. Google retcon. Google what does that it. mean? Like wreck it? Google it. I'm not Googling Google it. What does it retcon. mean? I'll read you the description. I'll Google it. Do so you don't even it. know, do you? Yeah. <laughs> it means it didn't happen. Oh, really? In a storyline, it didn't happen. Like, Or if they messed up and there's a plot hole, they retcon it. Oh, revising. Yeah. Uh, Essentially. What? I, I don't know where retcon came from. It's just a term from my generation. Hmm. So so they're, so they're just saying he's like, yeah, it's cool if they just totally disregard my movie and do whatever. I got they want. the money from it. I really don't care. Huh, he's, weird. And it was funny because right under that there was a headline. He still get Ryan still gets his movie trilogy, <laughs> and that's why he's okay with it. Yeah, for sure. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's so, crazy. I mean, it's not, there's really not much to talk about, but it's kind of interesting how little he stands behind his own movie. Well, I I don't know. Is it more like he just sort of is understanding the backlash is there, and he's just like, well, I already made it, so it's there. Right. And you can do whatever you want. But I mean, JJ has every right to change it. It's his script. I, I mean, he can do what he wants. I, in with. the grand scheme of things, I I don't know. I I don't know if that movie. It's going to be hard for for the third movie to really be. Because for me, I, I I've said that you know, Snoke's not dead until the credits roll on nine. Yeah, <clears throat> you know he's not dead until the final credits roll. Um, well, he got killed. Quotations the same way Maul did. <laughs> Sorry, well, but well, yeah. heck, Maul's even and more he hardcore. F- he fell. He through, fell. <laughs> yeah, he fell down the hole of despair there. Yeah. <sighs> oh, goodness. So I mean, Good times. there's no reason. Good times. Good times. With Maul falling down now. You remember. And Darth Maul Remember? fell down. He got remember? cut in half and then fell down a giant hole. I remember. I remember thinking he deserved it because Qui Gon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. What else newsworthy we got there? You got a non Star Wars one too. We can talk about. Are we allowed to do that? Might as well. Are you sure. Disney that's how are coming in. That's how they are for me. <laughs> hey, what do you got? Uh, new Joker movie. That's yep. a thing. <laughs> yeah, you just showed me the trailer. I mean, I've seen it posted. Uh, I just really haven't watched it. About to see Joaquin, old Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix. You know, have you ever like heard his like life story? No. Like I he haven't. he grew up in like some weird commune cult. Him and his brother. And Does his that family. surprise you? Because it doesn't surprise. No, me. <laughs> but it's it's actually really sad because like his his brother, uh, I think it was River Phoenix. He actually played young Indiana Jones on Last Crusade. Oh, really? You remember that the opening scene where it's like where he gets uh, they show where he gets his uh, scar yeah. and here's the Hat Kid and all that That's good stuff. Right. 
So yeah, he died young. Hmm. And, uh, you know, jo- Joaquin's obviously done some pretty pretty cool roles uh, throughout, but he's, he seems like a weird guy. Yeah, he does. You know, and um, probably a decent fit for him. Because I'm, to be honest, like, okay, so Heath Ledger's Joker, yeah, it was really good. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how well that movie's going to hold the test of time, though. Like, the uh, further out I get, I think I think it's not necessarily him, but it's probably more Christian Bale's Batman yeah. that might not hold up. Because honestly, <laughs> it gets old fast. It gets old fast. But yeah. he, I like he Christian did a great, Bale, though, too. But, um, he did a great job. Yeah, he did. Uh, For what he had. I mean, the role literally killed him. You know? so, <laughs> that I mean, and just being an actor in Hollywood. Yeah. Uh, and then you had Jared Leto, who, to be honest... I don't I, even want to talk about him. I don't even really... Th- I don't think he's a good Joker. I, I don't... I barely consider him a Joker. Yeah. He's just a plot device for uh, Margot Robbie, honestly. Well, yeah, we all know why people watch Suicide Squad. Exactly. We all know why there's a Suicide Squad, too, because Margot uh, Robbie... But anyway, but then, but of course, the best of all is old Galifianakis. You know, old yeah, you were, you were looking up. He was looking up this whole <laughs> list of like jokers, and he starts. He runs across this list, and he's like, "Who are these guys?" There's like a lot of voice actors, yeah. and like, yeah, Zach Galifianakis, Troy Baker. <laughs> you know, he voiced like what was a Lego Movie Joker, yeah. and then Troy was from the video game. The yeah, Arkham. Series. There are a couple of them, yeah. but obviously, the best vocal Joker is. Star Wars related, right? Mark Hamill. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he was amazing. Which also Joker. the creepiest Joker. Have you... Oh, for sure. I mean, by far the creepiest looking Joker. If they could emulate that in real life, yeah, that would be a Joker that I'd want to see. Yeah, Mark Hamill, you know, his voice acting is, is on point. He's He's got a great grasp of that. But yeah, just an iconic Joker from the classic 90s cartoon. Um, I wonder what he had more fun with. Just taking out the money, the fame. Like, do you think he had more fun being Luke or Joker? Uh, that's a good question. That'd I don't be, know. I wonder. I'm sure someone's asked that, and it's probably somewhere out there you can find it. But yeah, I'm sure. I'd love to know that. Yeah, that would, that would be interesting. So if he pops up during celebration, that's what you better ask him. That's cool. I text him. He's gonna be there. Okay. We're we're planning on meeting up. And Is he gonna give you your Disney checks while you're there? Uh, that's the hope. Okay. I can't guarantee it. They might all be spent while I'm there, but because yeah. I mean, he just sends them directly to me. I mean, <laughs> trying to flex like you know better than me. Uh, he just knows my address. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, it's. Uh, I don't know. You're not as thrilled about. It. I definitely want to see it. It comes out in October. I think. I think it'd be. I'm a little movie. tired of just comic book movies in general. I get that, and reboots have burned me out, but. I mean, a genuinely good actor doing it. Here's my thing. My favorite villain was um, Mr. Freeze. Oh, I'm sorry for your luck, then. Yeah, Because obviously- he's been in the Batman <sighs> movies once. Yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was not a good, that was not a good one. But um, the Penguin was good, in it? No, the Penguin was a stupid villain. I never really liked him at all. Uh, but again, my guy was freeze because Mr. Freeze was interesting and he wasn't like a full on villain villain. He had a reason. Yeah. And he was also insane, but no, he, same man in Spider-Man. Yeah. But my point is, is that could be a more uplifting or modern day story you could tell, but we're in such a phase where we just want to see murderers. Yeah. You know, you see people blame Deadpool for that. Well, it's not just that. (laughs) I mean, people would go on Netflix or TV and watch Making a Murderer. Yeah. I don't need to I don't need to hear about those kind of people. Well, the problem is everyone in society. Not that Mr. Freeze didn't kill anybody, but anyway. I think it's more a problem (laughs) people in society want to understand their mentality. I don't. If you did, you know what that would make you? Just like them. You're not supposed to understand. Well, anyway, I, I just I always wanted to see somebody go back to Mr. Freeze and just do it right. Like have a have a good actor play it and a good Batman. Who would you cast? I Sean Bean. But they die like twenty yeah. minutes in. 
Yeah. Well, he'd die eventually in the movie to save his yeah. wife. Yeah. It's it's perfect. But not 20 minutes in. Well, it doesn't have... I mean, <laughs> Ned Stark survived the entire first season. That's equivalent of 20 minutes for the entirety of the series. <laughs> I don't know about that. But but no, seriously. I mean, I, I've, I've actually thought about that quite a bit. And I, that's that's what I wanted to see, and it'll never happen. But that would be what I want to see. Well, I'm sure if it went by Hollywood standards today, we'll see Poison Ivy before we see Mister Free. <laughs> yeah, they are, they're all muddled. I don't remember. I mean, I remember Poison Ivy being in one of the movies, but it was a, it was Mister Freeze, Poison Ivy, and all in the same movie. Yeah, and no. uh, who is the main villain in Bane? Bane was in that movie too. Was he? Yeah. Mm, okay. Poison Ivy like controlled him. It's been a long with, time. With like these chemicals <clears throat> and stuff. Okay. I believe you. It's just it's been a long time. Wasn't it? Was there one with those actors or two? I don't know. I, I feel I like remember. it had just everyone in one of them because I think it had the Joker, it had the Penguin, and all the rest that I just mentioned. I don't know. I can't. It's I don't even remember which many. one it was. I'd have to look it up. But yeah, no, I I, I always wanted to see Freeze. But yeah, I mean, uh, Joaquin Phoenix as Joker, sure, would be okay. Maybe I'm a little. I'm. It, it seems like they're giving him like way too human of a backstory. Yeah. But well, uh, again, they try to do that with villains nowadays. Yeah, I mean, which is cool, but that kind of de- that kind of defeats the comic booky angle of things. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of like you almost start rooting for them more than the superhero. Yeah. Do you, Do you think uh, Do you think they'll have them sing like "Walk the Line"? Yes. Maybe get a little crazy and just walk the line it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he'll have Johnny a song. Cash. No good. Good times. What do you think will be <clears throat> the next big obsession? After they've completely burned out superhero crap. God, who knows, man. We went through vampires and superheroes and Avatar, whatever the hell that was. I th- well, Thank God that was just one movie <laughs> yeah. and not a million like Marvel. Uh, well, you never know. <clears throat> I, I don't th- know. I think the next stage will be Battle Royale movies. <laughs> 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 PUBG presents Apex Legends Battle Royale the movie featuring Fortnite. All you hear is beep 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 beep. Take that, you mother beep 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 beep. beep. <laughs> Voiced by thirteen-year-old children on headsets. No, no, it's gonna be Game of Thrones style. You're gonna get to know every one of these characters. There's gonna be like a hundred characters. You get to learn intricate. Roles in their lives, <laughs> everything about them. You're gonna love them all, and then someone's gonna die like half a second into That's the. Good. Yeah, someone's <laughs> gonna beat someone to death in their underwear. In a world where frying pans reign supreme. Yeah, yeah that would suck. What if they <laughs> took the frying pan and made that into bullets? It'd be the ultimate weapon. Oh my God. Cast iron bullets. <laughs> From the indestructible frying All pan. Right. All right, we're cutting all on that short here, boys. Let's go ahead and uh, get back into the reread. Uh, we've got chapter fourteen. We are picking back up with uh, Luke and Way Way. Luke and Jason. Way Way. Jason. Way. I want to kill him this chapter. Well, he does get a little, little complainy again. Bitchy. So we're at the ex gal faci- <laughs> the ex gal facility. <laughs> the ex gal facility. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently it's getting later now. I'm I I'm up at four forty five every morning. I'm kinda tired by now. It's only eight. Uh let's see. In our in our last uh chapter with this they had like uh <laughs> what was it, the the head, the skull? Oh yeah, it had a the- bunch of uh little Electronics and stuff well, all around like, it. There was like a droid head with like a human skull. A circuitry in it. wrapped all around. Like yeah, it went through one of the eyes, yeah, through yeah. the mouth, and then back into right. the nose. Yeah. Well, they're basically still going around the station and you know discovering all this beat up electronic stuff yeah. and the baby doll. Yeah, the poor baby. That was so. All weird. this, all this doll did was say phrases. And they ripped its head off. Never why, be, Uncle Luke? Why? Never to be held again. Yeah, he's masked just as bad as everything else. Poor R 2s like, this was my family. 
I knew uh, them all from the beginning. <laughs> I knew them all from microprocessors. Oh, uh, let's see here. I wrote this one's code, <laughs> and this one wrote my code. I was their creator. They worship me like a god, <laughs> and they wrote it. Master Skywalker, destroy them all. Why not? Uh, I'm, I'm feeling a little skippy here. Um, <laughs> you want to just get to the part where Jason's annoying? Well, no. My point is, is like they're, they're just they're they're kind of sifting through a little bit of this. Uh, Luke thought for a moment and suppressed smiles. He did so. Okay, nonchalant way. Jason inferred to blast boat is our ship. Little mm-hmm. little uncle and nephew time. Casually including him on any scouting missions, uh, like pretty behind with R2, but he realized blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we're skipping pages. That's two pages we just skipped. <laughs> yeah, again, it's a lot of rooting, and then he has a little moment where it's like, oh, he says our ship. That's so cute. I was going to leave you behind with R2. <laughs> <laughs> but you'd probably just die because you're yeah. incompetent. <clears throat> Oh, uh, let's see here. So, uh, let's see here. Uh, so is there, they're going on here. Okay. But we take precautions first. We'll check the communications tower and see if it can transmit data, which we know it can't. <laughs> if it can, uh, we'll link it to Someone the ship. Someone because of that. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> use our comm links to be able to make a running port report to blah, blah, blah. Ship will cache data or two. Uh, I would have thought of that precaution. I, I wouldn't have thought of that precaution. Jason smiled cautiously. Shut your mouth. Uh, we're here to learn what we can to safeguard the rest of the New Republic. That's a pretty. That's a running theme in this chapter. Luke mm-hmm. keeps having to say this. Why are we here to safeguard the New Republic? Why are we here to safeguard the New Republic? Good God, do you all have Alzheimer's? I've said this four times, children. Yeah. This is why we're here. And then Jason, and to see if we can find anything to help cure Mar. Right. Uh, Shut up. Yeah, I mean that too. Our mission is more important than we are. We take no stupid chances, but we don't shrink from duty. Understood? And then he says, I do. Master Master Skywalker. Skywalker. Yeah, so that's another theme here. Yeah. Well, they did uh, set up a communications relay, so apparently we were wrong. (laughs) I guess that guy did fix that cable. Yeah, whatever. It's not true. Before he splatted. Fake news. Uh, and then they ge- they changed into their uh, AKT combat jumpsuits. Coolest jumpsuit ever. Think it talks to you. Well, guess what? They're close fitting, single piece garments. Reminded Luke a lot of a pilot jumpsuit. <clears throat> Just not orange. <laughs> <laughs> Though his one was colored green, dark enough to be almost black. The elbows and knees uh, were well padded. Stiff trauma for pads. When, for when you fall down. <laughs> Stiff trauma pads were sort of inserted. They're training suits. Yeah, breast, back, and along the arms and legs to provide added protection. Having That'll really heard, help with those snake staffs. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Having heard from Mara just how savagely he used him long fight, fought, because he didn't fight him, uh, Luke wanted to take no chances. No, because he was too busy just rummaging around <laughs> yeah. looking at data while his wife was battling next yeah, door. That's good. If they're going to be armored, so are we. So basically, if they're going to be armored, well, we'll just put on jumpsuits with padding. Yeah. It'll be great. Phillips. Yeah. All that stuff. We can we can defend ourselves against Phillips. Well, he tugged on some straps, tightened the suit up, and... I thought it was already form-fitting. Well, guess what? He had to tighten it up just a wee bit more. Did you kind of imagine, like, Back to the Future, the sneakers? <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> good. Well, he also has a helmet. And some goggles. <laughs> <laughs> so he's just wearing a flight suit. <laughs> no, it's combat armor. Yeah, it's a full flight suit with just extra padding. <laughs> and he took a blaster, hung his lightsaber. I'm ready. Does anyone ever use blasters in this series? Because everyone oh. carries one. No one uses one. Well, I don't know if we've really heard anything about you know too much blasting. I mean, I know Anakin Blast him! And so does Mara. Mm. Never use them. Well, Jason's suit, because we have to talk more about fashion, appeared to be identical to Luke, save for the color. It was deep, dark red. Much darker than the color of dried blood. Luke realized that the suit's color would hide any blood that might leak out of Jason. You know, I think I, I'm, I'm 90% sure I didn't read that. <laughs> well, that's what it says. <laughs> 
In other words, yeah, I don't have to deal with it because I didn't see you bleeding. <laughs> yeah, I mean, basically, that's what he says. You know, I can't see the blood, so if you're dying, I won't know unless you say it, I guess. I'm going to ignore you in the force. So yeah. kind of have to tell me. So, Jay, again, he says we're just out here to gather facts, nothing heroic on this trip. I got it. Uh, so they start to go out. The other plants here aren't prepared to deal with this invader. So it just spreads and spreads, doing what it does naturally. The implications of the idea tightened around his shoulders. Hmm. Yuz and Vong were certainly, you know, it was the plants. Tightened yeah. his shoulders, not tightened around. Tightened his shoulders. Still doesn't make sure. sense. Okay, but... whatever. Uh, let's see. I'm going to jump around a little bit here because I, I don't know. There's blah, blah, blah. It's, 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 a, it's a ship field. Yeah. They're making coral skippers. Yeah. Okay. There's like two things <clears throat> worth talking about. On yeah. In the whole chapter. Yeah. They see a lot of green vines. Uh, but basically, this is a coral skipper breeding field. Yeah. Do, however, see something interesting. People. You know, they're macro people. binoculars. Yeah. Not just binoculars. Micro or macro. Macro binoculars. Big, big binoculars. Yeah. Yep. But anyway, there's people out there and they've, uh, what was it? There's something. Uh, they have growth. You look closer for signs of trauma and saw nothing, obviously scars, but they were odd uh, calcifications on their legs, exposed area of the arms. And even the skulls of the creatures concentrating. Luke got a sense of them through the force and could see the life energy flowing in them in a muted fashion. The people were the stress life forms he'd sensed before. The energy seemed to eddy around these odd formations, revealing that at least on some of them, the bony protrusions also extended deeply into their skulls and body cavities. So the zombies. Yeah. There's the last of us zombies. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when they started... Uh, when they started describing them, I was like, oh, my God, they reanimated the ex-gal scientist. Because there was like a Twi'lek yeah. and like... Oh, no. See, I thought it was the Raiders that they picked up in space for some odd reason. Oh, yeah. Because there was a yeah, Twi'lek yeah, in yeah, that, yeah, too. Yeah. That was like the second in command. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. No, I, for some reason, I went to, oh, my gosh, there's ex-gal zombies. I mean, that'd be cool, too. I'd be okay with either one. <sighs> True enough. So then we kind of go into this whole dichotomy or paradox or whatever you want to call it. Jason's like, well, we should help him. Luke's like, don't you understand what I've been saying? We're just here to collect information. Like, what don't you, what, do I need to smack you? <laughs> kind of goes back to, and I know I said this already once, but episode one, well, I didn't really come here to free slaves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I get that. Um, they do come across some, uh, some villips being grown there was a little part in there about uh, one of the guys was like uh, using a ladle to pour water on him, I guess. And they just get stabbed for dropping the ladle. Well, he drops the ladle. All the people are like, ooh. Well, he drops the ladle and like falls in. And then all the rest of them start like screeching, you know, or whatever. And then we do see that there is a Yuzen Vong warrior here. And he comes down and just Amphistaff amphistaffs him, him. Yeah. <laughs> several times. Uh -huh. Yeah, he kills him, and then he, he impales him and takes him out of the water, throws him down, then stabs him two more times. And has the Twi'lek and one of the humans dry his legs and weird stuff. Yeah, that was that was interesting. So he, like, uh, yeah, he's just standing there, and his human zombie slaves just sort of dry him off with their rags. Yeah. It's like, don't get too moist, Master. Not moist. And then Jason just puts his foot in his mouth there for a second about Mara. <sighs> Yeah, I know. It's 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 a theme. Let me get just, there. Let's just poke the master. Let's piss off the master. Well, I, that's really skipping quite a few pages here. They also did come across, uh, not to get crazy far here, they did come across a coral skipper that was, like, small. Yeah. And uh, I don't get it. Why did they leave one behind? Birth defect. Yeah, birth defect. <laughs> it grew without a separation here. It could have been a local microbial infection or just lousy genetics. So, Luke's you know. a scientist now. <laughs> Why not? But no, I mean, seriously, in, in, you're, you're growing everything. Just like with humans, I mean, we have, I mean, we have diseases, yeah. birth defects, um, 
Maybe the coral skipper was just stuff like that. inbred too much. Well, you never know. You don't know about their selective breeding processes. No, but seriously, I mean, that that that's highly believable. So they just left it behind. Yeah, the nutrients thing was kind of interesting, though, because they did kind of reference uh, good feel... Things happening, you know, trees sending stuff in the ground. Yeah, yeah, that ground was... Ground turned black, like from oversaturation of nectar or whatever. Yeah, no, well, it, it, they basically sterilized the soil. Because uh-huh. they had pulled... Every, it seems like they would pulled everything out of the soil that it could bear, so it's basically sterilized. So essentially, I mean, when you think about it, you've grown the coral skippers, you've basically killed the planet. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing for the... Nothing more. You grow them, and then it's just dead, right? So, essentially, it brings up the question, are the Yuzenbong invading because they have exhausted their resources? We'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. In okay. book four. <laughs> yeah, in, in book 12. Uh, let's see here. So, I'm going to skip. There's where the Yuzenbong came down. Um, you want to talk about the billups? Find a little billup. Berries. Mm, I don't really care about that. <laughs> yeah, they're villops of all sizes. They're like little berries. <laughs> Only they were human head shit. Yeah, that was fun. Oh, For, oh they're villops. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Well, after the uh, the guy gets killed, uh, Luke felt an emotional chill coming from his nephew. I'm sorry you witnessed that. I'm sorry for the man who died there. Jason shook his head. And his the, emo comment. Yeah. Using Vong I faced while rescuing Danny. They were formidable, but nothing like that one. He had no mercy at all with him. Because all those using Bong had plenty of mercy. Yeah. No, just a cold, efficient killer. He was bigger than the one Mara fought. Longer and leaner. Longer. Much longer and leaner. Not taller. Longer. Just longer. <laughs> I wish I had seen more than just a silhouette. Uh, Jason smiled. We'll get to see them up close soon enough. <laughs> and then Luke shook his head. I certainly hope not. And here we go. He uh, blinked. Yeah, he blinks. Oh, Jason blinked. Here we go. He's going to get bitchy. <laughs> but we have, uh, we have to do something for the slaves. And then Luke says, do we? Remember why we're here. To save the New Republic and those people who are part of the New Republic, pointed to the South. You can feel how much pain they're in, how much damage Yuz and Vong have done to them. How can you not think of moving to free them? I do think of it, but I also know it's not practical. Not at this stage. We have a lot to learn here. It's not satis- It's not a satisfactory choice, but a necessary one. Uh, freeing them will doom the new republic, or will it merely make your mission to save your wife that much tougher? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, he's he's just such an idiot. <laughs> he's just not a smart kid. So Luke's obviously, you know, he he's angry. Is that what you think the real reason for our being here is? You think I would come here just to save Mara? Again, there's a lot of arrogance written into this book. Yeah. It's, it's pretty saturated. I think, Uncle Luke, that you love her so much that you do anything to save her. The youth glanced down. I'm sorry for saying what I did. I didn't mean it. So he said what he didn't mean to say and then doubled down on it, yeah. but he didn't mean to say that either. He's apologizing, but he's... Driving home the point yeah. <laughs> at the same time. Actually, Jason, you did mean it. It's a paradox. We have to allow some people to be in pain so others can avoid it. It's uh, an easy choice when you're the one who will be hurting, but tougher when others have to suffer. You have to agree, though, that we can do nothing right now. We don't know enough about the use involved presence here. We don't know enough about the slaves. We don't even know if they can be saved. <laughs> Yeah. Well, excuse me. Yeah, it doesn't sound one. like they can at this point. They got like bones sticking out of their skull. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, I, that seems they're zombified from, yeah. from my point. For all we knew, they agreed to this treatment. Well, Luke, you might have yeah, worn that a just too far. a bit too far, but it's fine. And even Jason points out how ridiculous that yeah. comment is. Probably right, but we are not in a position... Okay, I can't imagine his death was part of any bargain. You're probably right, but we're just not in a position to do anything for slaves. But to do nothing, that's not not being a Jedi. And Luke's comeback is just perfect on this. Yeah. I thought you were the one who didn't want any part of these missions. Da-da-da. I thought you were the one who decided the essence of being Jedi was going off to study your relationship with the Force. You forgot to mention that the flesh around Luke's eyes tightened. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I I did, but the Jedi Master cut him off. Jason, you have 
to understand something, something very important. As smart as you are, as much training as you have, as much of the galaxy you've seen, you're still only 16 years old. You only have 16 years of experience. But I actually don't really like that argument because that's not always valid. Yeah. Having more experience doesn't mean making difficult deci- doesn't make doesn't mean making difficult decisions are easier, but it does let you know that sometimes tough decisions must be made. Uh, so yeah, and then he says, "I understand, master." Kind of little robotic tone. Yeah. Use the word master with the same tone a slave might use to address his owner. Uh, so yeah, we need to get back. Besides, uh, it's a plan, Uncle Luke. It's a plan. Ripple of dead. Dread ran through him. Use it wrong. Clearly problems. Good. Okay. Slash rats. <laughs> Sleepy. Got it. <laughs> so yeah, no. It, little little covert kind of mission here. Uh, more disagreements between master and apprentice. Um, zombie people with bone protrusions, uh, an obvious using Vong overlord of the coral skipper fields. Who also grows Phillips in his spare time. Yeah, well, why not? Phillips are cool. That's his side hobby. Maybe he has a little tank of Oogleth muscures and Oogleth cloakers. And I wonder if one of the war coordinators could be on this planet. I don't know about that. I think that'd just be... That's just Asking too much, man. You know how I imagine the war coordinator? You know those dog things in Hellboy at the beginning of the movie? Uh, that, uh, it's been a long time. You like remember? Hellboy. You know that. I movie. can't even remember it. Oh. Look, you'll just have to look him up someday. you just have to look him up. Okay. Well, anyway. <coughs> Excuse me. So, your favorite chapter to date, right? Anything with Jason, man. Anything. <laughs> He's just my favorite. Oh, I know you love him. But yeah, seriously, any any uh any final thoughts kind of on the chapter? Anything we wanted to point out before we uh I sign want more off? Jana. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm <laughs> I'm I'm there with you. Um, Hopefully I haven't even looked ahead. Hopefully she's on the next chapter or two. Yeah, it kinda needs to be. I mean, she was one of my favorite characters for in some of the later books. Yeah. Uh when she kind of grows into her own a little bit more and the story begins to decentralize a little bit. Yeah. And uh, spread out a little bit more, but uh, but yeah, no, I, I it, it's fine. I, they're still fact gathering. They're still trying to figure this out. But the big thing is, the Yuzen Vong still have a foothold here. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, pretty, they pretty much own the planet at this point. Man, I mean, it's just one planet, and it's just a few coral skippers. But still, it's a foothold. Isn't it kind of crazy to think that no one but Luke at this point has thought to look at this planet? Discover what's happening. Well, the, the that's new, how little the New Republic values their opinion. It's it's the same thing. I mean, sometimes you just get too big to run it all, and that's pretty much what's happened. So, yeah, but sure. yeah, yeah, no, it was it was it was okay. Uh, hopeful that we'll get some more action. I want some more action. Yeah. Need something to wake up to. Yeah, we really haven't had a major fights. Not yet. We'll get there. There's still plenty to come in the New Jedi Order. We've got you know. 47 more books to look through for the next 30 years. It'll be great. And then maybe we'll eventually uh, get to one of the other series. Number 65. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> well, anyway, guys, we uh, we greatly, greatly appreciate you stopping by for another episode here. Uh, thank you very much for the support. We appreciate it immensely. Uh, you guys have a great rest of your week. And as always, may the Force be with you.